What is going on ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the stream and today we're going to be going into our second draft day as well as recapping the season to this point. So as you can see, we have actually not had too bad of a season. We are sitting here at 49 and 47, uh, actually very overperforming in my opinion. You see we are sitting eight games out of the American League Central behind the Minnesota Twins, but we are only one game out of the American League Wild Card behind the Seattle Mariners. So um, I've been pretty impressed with the team to this point. Um, taking a look at some of the team stats up there in the upper left hand corner. Uh, we've really been carried by our pitching staff. We're third in ERA uh, and the bullpen especially has really carried us to this point. Hitting, on the other hand, has kind of been a little bit of a struggle bus, and by a little bit, I mean a lot of bits. Uh, we're 28th in batting average, 30th in on-base percentage, and 29th in slugging, which is just a terrible combination, which has led us to be 27th in total runs scored. So somehow, we have found a way to be above 500 despite that, but yeah, it has not been pretty to this point. Some of the reason that we've had so much trouble offensively is because we've been hit by the injury bug quite a bit. It initially started with Andrew Vaughn, who broke his foot in April. Uh, this led me to have to sign Christian Arroyo off the street because I just needed somebody who could play the corner infield positions. Uh, and we've had to leave. <laughs> we've had to run most of this season with a guy with Christian Arroyo in our lineup. So that's telling you how bad things are going. Um, we then lost Mauricio Dubon, who you'll see is not on this injured list anymore because he eventually came back. He had a broken leg ooh, maybe like a week or two after it, uh, Andrew Vaughn got hurt. Uh, then Ahmed Rosario also broke his leg, although he is two days away from returning. He was off to an okay start to start the season. He got through 54 games before that injury was picked up. And then we lost Omar Narvaez to a broken hand. He wasn't doing too bad. It's, uh, I'm a little bit frustrated by this because it's going to cost us a trade asset this season. And, you know, I think he had decent enough batting numbers and as a good defender, he could have fetched something for us at the deadline. But, you know, it is what it is. Checking out our lineup and looking at some of the statistics, obviously it has been quite rough. Um, I thought things started out decently, but once injuries started hitting us, it really forced us to play guys in roles I don't think they were comfortable with, and the wheels just kind of came off from there. Um, we also just recently fired our hitting coach, Marcus Thames, and hired Tom Kim, Kim instead, so hopefully in the second half of the season that'll help improve things. Um, so taking a look, Colton Kowser did eventually come back from his torn Achilles, and he has been having a pretty good season at this point. I've been keeping him in the DH role to kind of limit uh, his defensive role and help him finish the recovery from that Achilles. Uh, Jose Rodriguez has also been a blessing in disguise for us as well. I love the slash line there. Obviously, we'd love him to take some more walks, but you know what? I'm not going to be disappointed. Um, Luis Robert, uh, you know, y'all know that meme of the Bugatti in the trailer park? That's what it kind of feels like looking at Luis Robert on this team right now. Um, he's just been killing it once again. I think his war is, what, 2.8? So he's on pace for another five and a half plus war season. So he's really been a superstar for us. I'm pretty happy to have him around. Uh, Gavin Sheets was cold for most of the year, but he started to pick it up to get his respect the line, slash line to a respectable number. Randall Gritchick, it's been so bad in the lineup, we've had to actually start having him play against righties. Most of that damage with the slash line has come against lefties, so you know that's what we expected from him, and he's played that role really well. Christian Royal's not been bad, but again, as a guy who's not taking a whole lot of walks, but overall not bad for the numbers as a guy filling in for us. Uh, we've had to kind of mix and match with the catcher position. Neither one of Hackenberg or Perez has really done that well. Perdomo's been terrible. Um, he did start the season with like a on-base percentage of like 360, but he's just been terrible. I mean, that is, that is, just, I, I can't say how bad that is. Uh, really disappointed to see how much he's regressed with the stick. Hopefully he can have a good second half of the season. Maybe a new hitting coach will help him out. And then Dominic Fletcher's actually struggled. I think we've had to have him play against more lefties this season than I feel like I'd be comfortable with. Uh, so that's really had to hurt his numbers. Uh, take a look at some of the other guys. Trevor Larnock, uh, he was doing okay, but then I had to start having him play against lefties, and that really torched his numbers quite a bit. And then Lever, Leover Piguero hasn't been quite what we hoped either. So, yeah, overall, the, uh, the, the lineup and the hitting has been uh, pretty rough to this point. Now looking at the pitching, things are a lot better here. You see Garrett Crochet with a 3.97 ERA, and the FIP also looks pretty good at 3.79. Tony Gonsolin did pick up an injury uh, in the first or second month of the season, and his ERA had ballooned to about seven, but he started to kind of settle in here as he's gotten healthy. Numbers aren't great, but you know he's still eating innings for us. That's okay. Uh, two K Two Saints had a pretty good year. The WHIP's a little higher than I'd like, and the FIP is a little bit higher, but overall not terrible numbers. Uh, Drew Thorpe has really started to settle in. You see. 
379 ERA. The fifth in the component ERA a little bit higher, but overall I don't hate the numbers. The home runs for nine is what really needs to kind of get in check for him. And then Chris Flexen has had another great year. Obviously, he's not getting a whole lot of love from FIP because he didn't strike out a lot of guys, but his component ERA is great. So he has been another strong pitcher for us this year. Checking out the bullpen, I think this is really where we've been able to win a lot of games. Sammy Peralta, uh, he's actually swapped roles with Jared Schuster, who's been just flat out outstanding. You look at the numbers there real fast. Uh, but Peralta's also been holding his own in that long relief, low leverage role. Jake Cousins has been great. Michael Kopech's also had a pretty good year. The whip's a little high, but his FIP is pretty good as well. Steven Wilson's having another good season. Davey Garcia, 0.87 whip. Here you go, young fella. He might have established himself as a long-term bullpen piece for us, although I would like to see him strike out a few more guys. Uh, again, we talked about Jared Schuster. Dylan Floro hasn't allowed a run in 21, uh, 22 in a third innings pitch at 22 holds. This guy's been just phenomenal. Like, check this out. FIP of a .38 and a Capone ERA of .42. That is insane. Insane. We're going to get something good for him at that deadline. I'm excited about that. And then Craig Kimbrell. The, uh, the numbers, the area is not great, but the whip is okay. Don't love where the FIP is at, but I would say he's still having a pretty good year. He's 28 out of 33 on closing save chances, so I think we can still get something for him at the deadline. Taking a look at some of the top prospects, our first round draft pick from last year, Barry Ryan. Uh, he started off pretty slow, but he's really started to pick it up as the year goes on. Started to get a little bit settled on, settled in to professional baseball. Now looking at Colson Montgomery, uh, he was just terrible for the first month and a half, two months, but he's able to get that uh, those numbers up. He actually was had an OPS below 600, so I was starting to get scared for him, but he's got that closing in on 700. Think we're we'll seeing a late season call up out of him. Uh, Brooks Baldwin has actually had himself a pretty good year. He's not a uh, top prospect for us, but still a guy to keep an eye on. Uh, Wilfred Veras continues to hit for decent power, but not much in the average or on base percentage department. Samuel Zavala has had a great season there as you check out some of the development there. Edward Car Edgar Caro, um, the numbers are still leaving something to be desired. It's mostly the power. I'd like to see him pick it up in the power department. Everything else is looking pretty decent. Down in double-A, I've been really, really impressed with Jacob Gonzalez this year. Uh, the average and the on-base percentage are exactly, exactly where I'd want them to be. And actually, the slugging's getting there. Obviously, I'd like to see a little bit more than 100 ISO, but I'm pretty happy. This kid has really come along well in the last two seasons. Ryan Burroughs is one of our lesser prospects, but at 20 years old, it's worth mentioning that incredible slash line that he's had this year. One of our mid-season acquisitions at the deadline last, last year, Saban Zabalos. Uh, he's also had himself a pretty good year, getting some pretty good gains. Might try to get him into AAA before the season over. We'll just see how things shake out. Ty Pete, uh, man, he's been struggling as left-handed pitching, uh, but the power is still there, about a 180 ISO. Only 19 years old, so I'm not going to worry too much about him, but we got to start getting a little bit more gains to those contact numbers, especially against lefties. Switching over to the pitching prospects, Gyro Iriarty is a guy I've kept close eye on. Haven't gotten him into the rotation yet in the majors at this point, but he's had a pretty good season at Triple A, so I'm probably going to be looking to push him into the majors, oh, after the deadline, I would assume. Noah Schultz really needs to kind of bring that whip into check. You see he's at a 1.72. Um, he's really given up quite a lot of hits and walking more guys than I'd like. Um, still getting some decent gains, but uh, the guy who's supposed to be one of our top prospects, I'm kind of expecting a little bit more out of him. One of our breakout relievers from last year, Seth Keener, has continued to pitch pretty well at AAA. He's eating up a ton of innings in the long relief spot. Still not gaining a ton. I think he's only up about two overall so far, but we'll see how much we can consolidate those gains before the end of the year. Nate Pearson isn't really a prospect for us, but somebody that I'm monitoring at all as well. He's just been filthy in AAA. I just don't have the bullpen slot for him at, for the time being, just because how some of the guys have performed in the majors, but really happy to see what he's been able to do there and get some gains to those uh, per nine numbers. Jake Eater is another one of our mid prospects, uh, also a guy that I switched into a full-time relief role this year, and he has also been shining in AAA. Again, just no spot for him in the Major League, uh, Major League bullpen just because all those guys up there are doing well. So we'll see if we can try to get a couple of these guys up there because they've earned it. 
Juan Fenn has taken a step back this year. Uh, his AAA numbers have not been great. So in terms of call-ups, he's a little bit lower down the line, along with Perlander Baroa. Um, not terrible, but also not great. So, I mean, just with some of these guys, how they're performing in the majors and then the guys in AAA, those two guys are lower on the list for call-ups. Now it's time to hit up the MLB draft. Um, I believe we have the ninth overall pick. So I have kind of honed in on a couple of guys here. Evan Calhoun, if I'm looking to go hitter, um, probably a little bit further away from the majors than I'd like in my first round draft pick and a little bit more defense over offense, but somebody I'll keep an eye on. Uh, but I think I really want to focus on pitchers. And the top one I like here is Bo Swain. Um, I think I'd like some more lefties in my system. A little bit worried that he's got the potential down to 75, but everything else I like quite a bit. And then the other guy I'm targeting is this Mel Ferreria guy. I'm not quite sure how to pronounce that, but he also looks pretty good. Um, so hopefully, hopefully one of these three guys is still there when I come to my draft pick at nine. All right, let's see who number one overall is. And it's Julius Gutierrez. We did scout him. He was a third-ranked prospect. Um, didn't really bother adding any of those guys to... Well, I mean, they were on my list, but I didn't really hone in on them because I didn't think they were going to get to me. So, all right. Number two is... Ray Fuentes, another guy who was in the top five for projected. So, uh, shortstop I quite liked, but didn't think he'd make it to us either. And finally, third overall is Bo Swain. Okay, so he went third overall. Obviously, he was pretty popular. Um, that stinks because I really liked him. I was excited to possibly have a shot at him, but hey, I guess it's not meant to be. All right, so unfortunately, both pitchers ended up getting drafted. Bo Swain, as you just saw, and then Mel Ferreria got taken by the Miami Marlins, who just apparently love pitchers because that's just another one for them. So... I don't think I want to go for Evan Calhoun. I went right field with our first round draft pick last year, so I don't know if I want to double up, especially because I don't love, love his bat. Um, another guy I was targeting was Miguel Ornelas, but I don't love his strikeouts per nine and his hits per nine being his two lowest per nine attributes. So I'm going to do something I don't usually do, and that's I'm going to draft a relief pitcher in the first round, but you can see that his stamina is actually decent. Um, so hopefully it's somewhere around maybe that 70 range. That'll be an okay enough pitcher. Um, don't love how his strikeouts per nine is not super high, but his walks per nine and his hits per nine are really high. So I think I could probably manage with that. So Alexis Ruiz, come on down, big dog. Welcome to the squad. So 20 year old, 69% uh, scouted, nice. Uh, so hopefully he's accurate, but Yep, that's what that's the cards we were dealt and I'm, I'm excited for this kid let's see what he can be and we are back here in the competitive balance round a don't really love a lot of the options that are left uh, in terms of at least hitters but i do like this lou zambrano kid um probably gonna be maybe in that like high c low b range for potential but maybe we get lucky and he's a little bit higher than that Overall, I like his makeup. His walks per nine is a little bit sketchy, but his strikeouts per nine and his hits per nine look like they're going to be pretty good. So, yeah, I was looking to try to go after pitching, and uh, I think that in these first two picks, we're going to end up with a couple of solid pitchers. So let's see what our third pick has in stow. Here we are in the second round, and I'm torn between two guys. There's this guy, Benjamin Bartlett, who was an original draft rank of 28th, um, but I didn't scout him early because I, I don't know, just he had 66 to like 95 and for both potential and overall. And those guys always kind of run me as a little bit sketchy. Uh, but I did have some time at the end of the dra um, scouting cycle to take a look at him. And I did get one scouting cycle in. I don't know. This guy could pay off quite a bunch or he could just be absolutely terrible in terms of the potential. I don't love his bad. He doesn't have really any power whatsoever. I feel like this kid is a lie. And he's reached this point already, so I, I, I don't know. Although we are right at our pick 49, which is where we have him ranked. I'm going to go for a little bit safer of a pick, but a guy whose makeup I like, that's Alan Rose. Gives me another power right field, right power hitting right fielder, left-handed bats. Um, probably going to be that mid-C potential, but he's a little bit more advanced. So a guy I'm curious about and uh, a guy that I'm going to be pretty happy to get into the organization. So... Hopefully, like uh, the Douglas guy that I drafted last year, maybe that potential is a little bit more near that higher end of the range, and uh, this ends up being a decent pick. 
And here we are in the third round. I got to do this quickly because we only have a minute and I remember the mistakes from last year. Uh, taking a look at some of these pitchers, I'm pretty happy with what we've acquired at the pitching department already, although Chuck Maxwell does look like he has really high potential. Ooh, really high potential, but he's I worry that he's going to be at that low 50s. Um, I'm instead going to take a shot on one of these guys down here, either Cesar De La Rosa or one of these first basemen. I feel like the first baseman I can wait on another round, so I might take a shot for another development, or not another, but I don't have a developmental catcher in the system at the moment. Hopefully, hopefully that potential is more near that 85 than to that 59, but we'll see. Well, Cesar De La Rosa, welcome to the squad. All right, so I learned from last year's mistakes. I have set up my rest of my draft board here so I do not get timed out on any of my picks. And that first baseman I was considering for the last pick is still there. So I think this is gonna be the time to pull a trigger. Doesn't look like he has a ton of upside, but I like his power and could be somebody to at least get into the organization and see if he can do something for us. So Angel Rodriguez, welcome to the squad. So I'm running pretty low on guys here. Probably gonna have to take a blind shot with my next pick because I doubt all three of these guys are gonna be there. Uh, I'm honing in on this kid, Nate McCann. He's a 22 year old, four year junior. Um, I'm, don't have high expectations for what he's going to be, but overall the makeup's not bad for a, a blind shot, and I'll be happy to bring him in. I could always use a little bit of minute, middle infield depth. And for our last pick, we're going to be just taking another blind shot on a catcher. You take a look at some of his projected numbers there, Robbie Martinez. He'll probably end up being a D potential and nothing that is too great, but hey, there's not a whole lot of options left out there at that moment, so you could do worse than taking this kid. And that is going to be the end of our second draft. Um, you know, I, I would say I'm probably not as excited about the kids that I drafted as I was about last year's um, guys, but I still think we got some pretty good pieces. So I can't complain too much. So um, yeah, I, I, you know, maybe a little bit less excited, but then again, I did have like what, a fifth overall pick last year or something like that. So you're always a little bit more excited when you pick in the, those high areas of the first round anyways, so. Before we get out of here, just wanted to kind of highlight my trade block uh, to preview for the next episode. These are just some of the guys that are on the list right now that we may or may not be trading. I haven't quite figured it out yet. I'm still trying to figure out if we're gonna be buyers or sellers. I mean, you know, to be honest with you, we are right in the thick of things as of now. Gotta be honest, though, I'm probably leaning a little bit more towards selling because we're really kind of outperforming our potential and I don't wanna get too far ahead of ourselves. I know this is more of a long-term thing and we gotta be thinking for the long-term. Um, so I would think we're probably going to definitely look to move guys on expiring contracts. I don't know about guys like Luis Robert Jr. or Garrett Crochet. I mean, I'll start fielding some calls on those guys and seeing what might be offered, but I don't know if I really want to move on those guys quite yet. It's because we're in the thick of things. But anyways, in the meantime, between time, I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day and I'm gone. Deuces.